This is a sicha, this is a shir on Likutei Sichais, Chelek Yud Zayin, that's book 17, Emer, the fourth sicha, Emer Dalet. I'm going to talk about Simcha. It's a sicha about the Simcha of Sukkot. The Pesach that says, the Pesach says, Usmachtem l'fnei Hashem l'keichem shivas yomim, you should rejoice before Hashem for seven days. This Pesach says, by the Yom Tov of Sukkot and the Torah. Of course, the reason we're talking about an Emer, is because that, that's what it says in Pasha's Emer. Right? So that's why we're discussing it. Although we're in the month of year. So the Rambam learns from this Pesach, that on Chag HaSukkot, there was a Simcha Yaseira, to use Rambam's language, Simcha Yaseira, an additional Simcha. More than the other Yom Tev. And this is the Lashon of the Rambam. Even though that all the Yom Tev, all the festivals, it's a mitzvah to rejoice in them. There was in the base of Mikdash an extraordinary day of joy. As it says in the Pasuk, that you shall rejoice before Hashem for seven days. How would they do this Simcha? Before the first day of Yom Tev. They would prepare in the base of a place for women above and for men down below. So that when the joy happens, there shouldn't be a mingling. So they built it before the first day of Yom Tov. And the actual simcha that was, was, was conducted was from the matzah, after the first, the night after the first day of Yom Tov. And similarly, the Simcha continued every day of Cholomay. This is the Lashon of the Rambam, the language of the Rambam. So the Farshim say, from the fact that the Rambam brings the Pesach, that you should rejoice before Hashem seven days, the Rambam brings it as a source to what he continues to say, that on Chesukas there was an extraordinary Simcha in the Beis HaMikdash, especially that it doesn't mention that this Simcha does mention a word that the Simcha is connected with the pouring of the water. We know that on Sukkot, there was also Nisu Chamaim. Every day they poured together with the process, with the carbon of Tomid, the, the morning daily and the even afternoon daily sacrifices. There was a pouring of water also into a special hole at the side of the Mizbeach. It was from the top of the Mizbeach and went down all the way to the bottom. Uh, on on Sukkot, we have a mitzvah also to pour water. And that mitzvah was celebrated with with a lot of joy. The drawing of the water the night before was celebrated with a huge amount of joy. And it's called Simchas Beis Sheba. The joy associated with the drawing of the water, which was going to be poured the next day in the Beis HaMikdash, all during Sukkot. But the Rambam doesn't say that that... The Gemara has big discussions about the way they, they, they did that joy. You probably know that we have today also reenactment. The Rebbe emphasized very strongly we should rejoice every day of Sukkot. Reminiscent of Simchas Beis Hashem, the joy of the drawing of the water. But the Rambam doesn't mention this when he says that there was an extraordinary Simcha in the Beis Hamikdash and Sukkot. So that's a proof that the Rambam holds that this Simcha he said, this extra Simcha, is not connected with the pouring of the water. That's not what brings the Simcha. It, there is an obligation from the pasuk in the Torah that in the Beis Hamikdash there needs to be because the pasuk says Usmachtem Lifnei Hashem Alekechem, you shall rejoice before Hashem. In the Beis Hamikdash there needs to be an extraordinary Simcha and Sukkot. Sukkot as a Yom Tev brings with it this extraordinary Simcha. Besides for the fact, in addition to the Simcha that every Yom Tev brings, and obviously that would apply also to Sukkot, uh, the, the regular Yom Tev Simcha, which means that it applies also to Jews all over, even not in the Beis HaMikdash. But there was, comes out, the Rambam is telling us here that Sukkot in the Beis HaMikdash, there's an instruction, Usmachtem, you shall rejoice for seven days in the Beis HaMikdash, extraordinarily by Sukkot. And that's why the Mishnah calls it, ay, so why does the Mishnah call this Simcha, Simcha's Beit Sheva? The Rambam doesn't mention the pouring of the water. But the, the, the Mishnah does mention this extraordinary Simcha as being the Simcha of the, of, the, of the pouring of the water. And the Gemara brings the Pasuk, Sha'afta Mayim Besasin, you shall draw water with joy. So it connects the extraordinary Simcha with drawing the water. So it doesn't mean that this is the source of this joy. This would mean to say, the way we're learning it in the Rambam, that the joy is because the Pasuk says you rejoice seven days. It says an extra joy by Sukkot. The, there's, then there's a Pasuk about the drawing of the water, which is an asmach. An asmach means we base upon that. This is something to base a, an additional extra simcha as well. So the extra simcha of Sukkot is also connected to the fact that we draw the water. And there's a Pasuk that 
alludes to the fact that when you draw water, it should be with joy. And that's why, says the Rebbe, this is not called Simchas Hashayeva. It's, it's not called the Simcha of the drawing. In other words, that the, the reason and what brings about the Simcha is the drawing of the water. Then it could, should have been called Simchas Hashayeva. The drawing associated with the Simcha associated with drawing the water. No, it's called Simchas Beis Hashayeva. The Simcha associated and that takes place in the house of where the drawing water is taking. In other words, the Simcha is for Sukkot. It's taking place in the Beis HaSheva. That's the name of the place that they did the, this extraordinary Sukkot Simcha in. So it's a combination of two things, but the Simcha is about the Sukkot Simcha. It's, let's say, if the Goldstein's having, a, if Goldstein has a party hall and they're having a wedding, and it's the Simcha of Sukkot, which is going to be held in the party hall of Goldstein at the wedding. It's the Simcha of Sukkot that's bringing the party, that's bringing the joy. There's also a, 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 a Goldstein wedding hall that's holding a wedding, so it's going to be taking place there, but that's not what's causing the joy. The joy is the joy of Sukkot. If the, if the example doesn't make sense, so disregard it. I'm just trying to get my head, my head wrapped around it. So, okay, we have to understand, if the joy is joy of Sukkot, and that's a joy that the Torah explicitly says, again, about the Beis HaMikdosh, for the seven days of the Beis HaMikdosh, you need to have this extraordinary joy in the Beis HaMikdosh, so we have to understand, L'cha'eda, in the Rambam, there's a conflict. Why? The Rambam starts off speaking about the Simcha Yaseida, the extra joy. And he says, you learn it from the passage that says, you shall rejoice before Hashem, Shiva Siyom, in seven days. So that means, and that also includes the first day of Yom Tov, seven days. So since the first day of Yom Tov is one of the seven days, so why don't we rejoice in that same way on the first day of Yom Tov? Right after that, the Rambam says, and that when did it practically start? After the first day of Yom Tov, much of the first day of Yom Tov. Even though the, the, the Rambam does give a reason for that. He says, this Simcha doesn't push up Shabbos and Yom Tov. But that itself is a question. If the Simcha is said of this additional Simcha, you would say it's not a biblical directive, obligation. It's only a Dindar Abonans. We'll understand, okay. Yom Tov Arishan, the first day of Yom Tov, is a Yom Tov Minatari. You can't do the Simcha, which required music and the, the, the flute and the and, the, uh, and the, the, the string instruments and the trumpets and the cymbals. You know, as the, as the Mishnah describes, the way this uh, this great joy in the Beis Amish took place was with the, a, a, a musical uh, accompaniment, each one playing the instrument they knew how to play. So we can understand if it's if it was only a chiv drabbanon to have this simcha. So we can understand that this rabbanon dika simcha doesn't have the power to push off the rabbanon dika uh, uh, prohibition on playing instruments. If, however, as the Rambam says here, he's learning it from the Torah Pasuk, which says, Smach, then you have to rejoice before Hashem seven days, and that's what teaches us the extra and ordinary Simcha. So why doesn't this Chi of the Eid the biblical obligation, push off the rabbinic prohibition of using instruments? Especially, we know that there's a rule that ain't Shvus Mikdash. There's the, the law of rabbinic prohibition, Shvus. The word Shvus means those things that the Chachomim said we have to refrain from on Shabbos and Yantav. There's no rule of that in the Beis HaMikdosh. Those things fall off in the Beis HaMikdosh. We can rely on the Deiraisa. Simchas Beis She'eva in this form only took place in the Beis HaMikdosh. So why do we... And if it says Simcha Deiraisa, as we said, Raman's basing the Simcha on the Pasuk that says seven days rejoicing. So why don't we do it full seven days? I says the Rebbe the you'll say, well, we know from Tkiah Shefer, when the Torah says blow Shefer, and yet the Chachamim said maybe a Jew will come to carry, so we push off the blowing of Shefer. So isn't it obvious that here also we should push off the... So the Rebbe says, he points out an interesting distinction. If there's an obligation for... The mitzvah of Shefer, not every year does it get pushed off. Some years we can literally fulfill what the Torah says on the, on the first day of the seventh month. We blow Shefer most years. And Chachamim came and said that they, they placed a restriction. Here, if the Chachamim are going to say you can never play instruments, it's going to be every year. In other words, the, and if it's a Midairaisa Dikachil to have Simcha for seven days, and, and that's why we do it in an extraordinary way. The obligation is the extraordinariness of the Simcha. And the Chachamim come and take it away. It's a permanent taking away. It'll mean every year, because every year 
seven days of Sukkot means every every year there's a there's a there's a Shabbos. It means you're totally uprooting this mitzvah. That the Chacham don't do. So the question is, if it's Taka Deir Aisa, why don't we? The Rambam says it's Deir Aisa, and then he says we do it only six days, seven days Deir Aisa. Gimel. Also, we have to understand what's the source of the Rambam that this Osmachtem, this rejoicing of Hashem, requires a, a Simcha Yisera, an additional Simcha, an extraordinary Simcha. Base. More than that, Lechayda, how can you learn that this Pasuk is talking about the extraordinary simple base? I we know that the Rambam himself in the previous Allah uses this Pasuk to tell us that the mitzvah of Lulav is in the base of Mikdash seven days. We only in the base of Mikdash is the mitzvah, Midairaisa, biblical mitzvah of Lulav for seven days, only in the base of Mikdash. Now here we in the Rabbana, we do Zechel Mikdash, we do it seven days. But Midairaisa, the base in, in base of Mikdash, it's seven days. Outside of Beis Hamikdash, one day. How do we know it's seven days of Beis Hamikdash? Because it says, "Rejoice before Hashem seven days," and it's referring to the rejoicing that's associated with the lulav. So that pasuk is already telling us another halacha. So how would the Rambam base that this pasuk is telling us about extraordinary simcha midayir seven days? Later on, the Rambam says. Um, Later on, the Rambam says, Dalit, Vaita Shreib the Rambam. Furthermore, the Rambam says, it's a mitzvah to increase in this joy. And the simple people didn't do it. Ame Ha'orah just the simple unlearned people. They weren't the ones that were main participants in this joy. And not anybody who wanted could just come and participate and be, you know, be, you know, dancing. The Gidoyulei Chachmi Yisrael, the great sages of Israel, the heads of the yeshivas, the Sanhedrin, the Hasidim, the Skanim, the elders, the Anshemaisim, people of great deeds, these were the ones that were meraktim, were dancing, or mesapkim, and clapping, and nagdim, and singing, mesamchim, and making the simcha, the mikdash and the besam, mikdash and mechag, and in the days of sukkahs. Our kolahom, all the, the regular people, anoshim, anoshim, kulim, the men and women of the masses, so to speak, boim, lirus, and shmei, they came to see and listen. And the, the mucker of this, the source of this Allah is, is the Mishnah. The Mishnah says in Sukkah, Hasidim and Shemaisa, the great pious people, used to miracle, used to dance before the crowds. The crowds participated by, by watching. They were onlookers. Daphne Fasha, we have to understand. One, according to this, if as we said before, the Simcha of Sukkah is a Chiv min it's a biblical Chiv for rejoicing of Yom Tov. And it's not a dinder abonon that's associated with pouring in the water. So why didn't everybody participate? Why wasn't it that everybody who wanted to participate would participate in the actual dancing, the actual uh, personal involvement in the simcha? Why did the majority of the men and women only come to participate in the, by observing, by hearing and seeing? First of all, there's two parts to this question. How should how could there be a difference in the fulfillment of a mitzvah sasem in a biblical commandment which is just said blanket, everybody has an obligation. We don't find in any other mitzvah that there's a, a, a uh, oh, if you're a, if you're a big Talmud Chacham, put on tefillin like this. If you're a less Talmud Chacham, put on tefillin like that. No, everybody has the obligation to put on tefillin. Same tefillin, Meish Rabbeinu, and the simplest of people. B, where's the source of that? If the Rambam is saying that, where's his source? That's one question. Base, the Mishnah says, Chassin Ivan Shemaisa. The Rambam doesn't just say these two things, Hasidim, pious people, and Shemaisa, people of good deeds. The Rambam gives a whole bunch of different classes of people that he describes that would participate in the Simcha of Sukkot and the Beis Hamikdash. And he says, the great Chachmei Yisrael, Gidoy Lechachmei Yisrael, the great wise people of Israel, the Rosh Yeshivas, the Heads of Yeshivas, the Sanhedrin, the Hasidim, the Skenim, and Anshe Maisa. So he says the two that the Mishnah says, but he has another, Gdele Chach Misol, Rashi Shivas, Sanhedrin, Skenim. He has four, plus Chassidim Anshe Maisa, that's six, for the Mishnah's two. More than that, the Gemara brings the Brisa, which says Chassidim Anshe Maisa, so, so there's a Brisa that adds to that, not just Chassidim and Anshe Maisa. He says Bali Tshuva. In other words, the Brisa says there were three kinds, there were Chassidim Anshe Maisa, and Bali Tshuva, those that had done Tshuva. The Rambam adds, from two he makes six, but he doesn't bring Bali children, which the Bryson does bring. What's going on? Hey, furthermore, the Rambam says, the simcha that a person should rejoice when he does a mitzvah, when a person does a mitzvah and expresses his love of Hashem, that Hashem commanded. So in order to express your love of Hashem, who commanded the mitzvah, 
you have to have joy. That joy is it's a very big service. It's a great service and it requires effort. But you should know that anybody who lowers his, his demeanor or make gufa and he makes his body less important. Because don't forget when you you know when you when you're dancing, it's not very dignified. This is somebody who's great, who's showing that he's serving Hashem from love. And David Melech Yisrael Omar, he was dancing before the Oren, when the Oren was coming back, and he was dancing with abandon. It says, Mephazes or Mecharke Bechol Ezek. Mephazes means he was, well, you know, true. And it says, um, I mean, I'm just going to say my personal feeling here. When, 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 when you see, you can see it on videos, the Rebbe leading the crowd and getting up and dancing. And that's, that's the image you have when you read, the image I have when I read these posts, that David was mafazes, like, you know, bursting forth with Simcha, with all his might. And Michal, his wife, the daughter of Shaul the king, said, this isn't kingly, this isn't royal behavior. Why are you just dancing like one of the empty guys? Like, you know, you're just dancing, like, you know, with abandon. And David HaMelech said, Quoted the Rambam quotes, but I would make myself even less dignified than this. But you see, Shavu I would be more low in my eyes to express my love of Hashem. And before Hashem, we're all like nothing and just dancing with abandon before Hashem. So we have to understand why does the Rambam bring this concept of having simcha from mitzvah to to an, to an extreme? Why does the Rambam just bring it at the end of Hilchus Lulav when he speaks about this extra joy that we had on Sukkot? Even if he wants to connect the simcha of the joy of Sukkot to the simcha, the law of simcha in general, this is not the place seemingly, because the Rambam already in the laws of Yom Tev in general spoke about the simcha. So, and that was already mentioned before, so he should have already injected there about having simcha for mitzvah in general. Also, the simcha of Yom Tev is a, is a more general joy, general Yom Tev. So speak about the joy of general mitzvahs. And the third point that Rebbe says why this doesn't seem the place, and this ve'ika, this is the main point that I wants to raise the seum there where, the, where, where, where we're talking about simcha the Rambam already in Hilchus Yom speaks about the general simcha you have to have when you, about the general importance of simcha so why doesn't he already point, put in this point that he that he elaborates on here about David HaMelech and about the greatness of rejoicing for a mitzvah why doesn't he already put it in earlier so it's mashma that the simcha, somehow the simcha of a mitzvah generally, the Rabbah wants to point out, has a special connection to what we're saying about sukkahs, that there was a simcha, he said there was an extraordinary simcha. And now the Rabbah is going to put all these, pull all these things together. Vav der bir the explanation of this all. From the fact that the Rabbah brings the pasuk. Usmach, dem lefnei Hashem alekeich, shem asyom, yishu rejoice before Hashem seven days. The fact that he brings it as a source, for the extraordinary simcha of sukkahs, he doesn't mean to say that the Torah has created an additional obligation on top of regular simcha yom tov, an, addif- uh, an additional mitzvah of sukkahs, of extraordinary simcha on sukkahs. No. That I, that what I'm saying, since the Torah emphasized the general obligation of simcha of yom tov, but in the Torah it's emphasized about sukkahs in the Beis HaMikdosh, and you see that Torah puts more emphasis than other Yom Tov. It doesn't create an additional mitzvah. What it does create is, even though we know you have to have simcha, we would be having simcha on Sukkot anyway, because it's a Yom Tov. The Torah says, Rejoice in your holiday. This applies to all Yom Tov. However, then the Torah goes further and says, You should rejoice before Hashem seven days. In other words, you see that the Torah is emphasizing the Yom Tov simcha, but the emphasis is put in Sukkot. So, that led to a behavior pattern. That's why Hoysa, that I was using the language of Hoysa, they used to, in the Beis Migdash, treat Sukkot with additional joy, with extraordinary joy. In other words, because you see that the Torah is into Sukkot and emphasizes the Simcha of Sukkot, it's like, just let me give, give an example off the top of my head. It's like every Yom Tov your mother says, Make sure to take a, <laughs> a mother example, take a coat. Before you go out, make sure to take a coat. And then, uh, on, on Sukkot, the mother says, uh, before you go out, make sure to take a coat. And then you hear she says, make sure to take a coat. So it's not a new instruction. Every Yom Tov she's telling you to take a coat. But the Sukkot, the way she said it, make sure to take a coat. Oh, wow, you want to make sure, so you, you go and take a scarf as well. You make you take a, a thicker coat than you would usually take. 
It's not an additional instruction about a coat. Every Yavdav has Simcha. But the way the Torah was emphasizing this Simcha, it was done extraordinarily in the Beis Amikdash because to express that additional emphasis that you see the Torah placed. But it's not a new mitzvah, in other words. We don't need a source for it. It's the same mitzvah of Simcha of Yom Tov, but an accentuated, in an accentuated way. And that's what the Rama means by bringing uh, to Allah's onward, he says, mitzvah besimcha zu. It's a mitzvah to increase extraordinarily in this Simcha. In other words, it's not an additional, separate mitzvah of an additional joy. This mitzvah of Simcha Siyam Tov itself has to be done, is done in, a, in, a, in an emphasized way. And this, the Rebbe says in R38, we cannot explain in R37, he says that's why it's not a separate mitzvah. It's part of the, we don't have an, an, an additional mitzvah in the count of mitzvahs, the simcha of sukkahs, different than any other mitzvah. Also, this is why we can have simchas beisheva on sukkahs. It's not a problem of emar simcha besimcha. You're not allowed to join two simchas. They're not two simchas. This is the simcha of sukkahs that's being extraordinarily, the simcha of yom tov generally, which is being highly emphasized in the base of Mikdash on sukkahs. According to this, we'll also understand why simchas beisheva doesn't push off yom tov. Even though the Pasik does say seven days of joy, rejoicing, and through doing extraordinary simcha with the music and so on, you're making it extra simcha. But the Torah didn't give an additional special mitzvah of doing extra simcha, extraordinary simcha. And this, the general mitzvah say, of simcha siyantav didn't require every other yamtiv. We had the simcha without without instruments, without this extraordinary simcha. So this extraordinariness that we give to the simcha, which we bring in musical instruments, that doesn't push off the general uh, prohibitions of musical instruments on Yom Tov. Also, for this we'll understand what we said, that it was done before Yom Tov. L'cha'ira, the Mishnah says, seems to say that the building of the upper gallery, creating the... the, the, uh, this, uh, the creating the, the uh, mechitza, the separation between men and women, so they shouldn't intermingle during the simcha. This was done after the first Yom Tov. In other words, the eve after Yom Tov. But the Rambam says it was done before Yom Tov. Now we'll understand. If this additional extraordinary joy, it's not a of an additional obligation from the Torah. It's a way of expressing the extra emphasis of, of, of the simcha's Yom Tov, which the Torah gives on Sukkot. So you can't push off even doing melacha chalamay. You're not allowed to do work on Chalamayid that can be done earlier. And this kind of work building, you can't do on Chalamayid. So it's an Isur, it's a Shvus, but you shouldn't do it even on, uh, shouldn't do it even on what you go. Right? So it had to be done before Yom Tov, says the Rama. Zayin, according to this, we'll also understand why there were differences between the way the Yidin fulfilled the mitzvah. Since this additional simcha, it's not that there's now a new mitzvah, the extraordinary joy of Sukkot. If that was the case, everybody would have to participate in the extraordinary joy in with, with the, by themselves because it's just like every mitzvah to say everybody has to do no but this is not it's the mitzvah of simcha and now the difference between why the extraordinary way they celebrated on sukkahs with dancing and music is an expression of the chivov mitzvah it's an expression of the belovedness of the mitzvah of sukkahs how everybody expressed their endearment of this mitzvah Oh, so now this has got to do with the heart. You're talking about expression of simcha, the way a person feels the simcha. Feeling of simcha is not the same by every person. The Rebbe points out in in Ara 44 that, you know, joy is a feeling in the heart. With feelings of the heart, we know that there's going to be differences. Even in the mitzvah saseh, let's take the classic mitzvah, loving Hashem. So how can you command somebody to love? The mitzvah of love is the mitzvah to think about things and bring yourself to the emotion of love. Well, obviously, he says that ever that this mitzvah, the feeling of love, it's, it's based on thought, based on meditation, it's going to be different between various people. You know, the greater scholars will meditate more deeply and they'll bring it themselves to more of a feeling, or whatever the case is. As I'm saying that, I'm realizing maybe in a way the simplicity of the simple people may bring them to even a different form of the love of Hashem. Whatever the case is, it's already not a blanket, it's not an action. Understand? It's not an action. Sukkot, you have to do the action of participating in extraordinary simcha by dancing or something. No. It's the simcha of Yom Tif, which is expressed because the Torah expresses, emphasizes simcha of, of Sukkot in the Beis Amikdash. So therefore, everybody expressed it in the way that they needed to express it. 
So who's the one who expressed it in, in, in the greater way? The higher level people. And their simcha expressed, even physically, they would dance and, and, and clap. But all the other people, so their simcha could be expressed for the fact that they came and participated as hearing and seeing and onlooking. Once we understand that this additional extraordinary simcha is not an additional obligation, but not to it. it's an addition in the biblical commandment of the mitzvah say of having joy on Yom Tov, and it has to do with how, how, how much it's expressed by the feeling of a person who wants to express this extra simcha of sukkah. So we'll also understand why everybody participated. In other words, all the different kinds. In other words, chasidim and shemaisa. Everybody wanted to express their expression of joy on sukkah. It wasn't just one person did it for everybody. Also, now we're going to understand how we see what the Ramam says that all the various kinds of people that participated in this, Kenim, the Rosh Hashivas, right? All the six kinds that the Rambam enumerates. Because the Gemara in Bavli and Yishalmi brings the names of a few of the Tanoim, a few of the great rabbis who participated, and what they did, or what they said at Simchas Be'i Sheva. Certainly, based on the fact that uh, there's, a, there's an obligation to have an extraordinary Simcha in, in Sukkot, everybody participated. All the Tanoi participated. So why does the Gemara just bring some of the people and tell us what they said? It's because those people that the Gemara mentions are representative of the various divisions, the various sectors within the leadership, within the great people of Am Yisrael that participated in Sikhiz Be'i So each of them represents a certain sector of... And, and, and the way they expressed their endearment and their belovedness of the mitzvah, of, of, of the joy of Yom Tif, that's why they participated in their way. Chavar 47, there it says, in other words, the fact that the Gemara identifies who participated, it obviously doesn't say everybody, because everybody, all the Tannoim, all the great rabbis participated, but he chooses a few, and he says what they said, it's not just to tell us about those, but it's to give us an indication what they represent, who they are, and therefore what sector of the, the great people of Israel they represent. Let's see it here, the way the Rebbe explains it in detail. Ches, the Gemara says, Omar Rabbi Yeshua ben Chananiah, Rabbi Yeshua ben Chananiah said, when we used to rejoice in the Simcha of Beis HaSheva, we didn't ever taste the taste of sleep because we would fall asleep on each other's soldiers, soul, shoulders. The Gemara asks, it's impossible not to sleep for more than three days. We fell asleep. During the, during the day, they fell asleep on each other's shoulders. The Rebbe brings in a horror, this is a, a lichedudi at least, uh, gives us a certain angle that you're not even allowed to sleep temporarily outside of sukkah. So you see there that they, that they did sleep, at least they slumbered the uh, catnaps on each other's shoulders it was outside the sukkah, they were, they were in the Beis Amigdosh. So from here we see some source about, uh, related to the minig, that on Chabad, not to sleep in the sukkah. And sukkahs, of course, this is lechidudi. This is only lechidudi uh, means to, you know to, in a sharp way. In a, uh, not sure a good translation for lechidudi, but the Rebbe says I, the, 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 down below we send the Rebbe sends to a sicha where the Rebbe deals with this concept of sleeping in the sukkah comprehensively. So look there for the full explanation. I call upon him, but this is not the point. I got that was a tangent. Bishua bin Chananya said that we used to participate fully in the dancing to the point where we didn't even sleep full nights what's special about Bishu Mechanania what is he identifiably special that the Gemara chooses to say what he how he expressed about the greatness of Be'i Sheva so the Gemara says elsewhere that Bishu Mechanania he was the one who used to have debates with the elders of the house of Athens great philosophers so and he won the debates with them and the Gemara says that before he passed away so the the wise people of the Jewish people asked, what's going to be with us from the Apikursim? How are we going to answer them now that your, your wisdom is gone? And he answered them, not that somebody else will be able to answer them, he answered them with a posseg that says, um, this is a posseg in Yirmiya, of the Eitzah Mibonim, Nisachach HaChmosah, the way the Gemara learns it, that when the Bnei Yisrael no longer have the way to answer the, 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 the challenges posed to them, then the Chachma of the detractors will also be 
uh, will also be um, become soiled, will become uh, will become less. In other words, if I'm not here to be able to answer the questions, they won't they won't have the wisdom to be able to answer the, to be able to ask those questions. Or the other pasuk that's brought to the answer them is that Esau said to Yaakov, "Let's travel together, and I will go opposite you." In other words, Hashem doesn't bring the question of the heretic unless there's the wise person that can refute it. So, but that means to say that his chachma was unparalleled. He was from the greatest of chachma Yisrael. So much so that the chachma Yisrael said, well, how, are we, how are we going to survive when you're not here? Are we going to answer the heretics? So from this the Rambam learns, that the Rambam says, the Gidoy Le chachma Yisrael, the greatest of the wise people of Israel, participated in Sikhus Be'i We see this from Yishu Mechanania. Base. Now we have Elsa the Gemara says, they said about Rabbi Shimon and Gamaliel, when he used to rejoice with the Simchas Be'i he would take it describes that what he would take and the way he, with what he would dance. I'm not sure if it was him that had the, the juggling fire, but whatever it is, that's not the detail is not relevant here. So the, the Gemara says, what is Abshim Gamliel? He was the leader of the Sanhedrin. Elsewhere, the Gemara says about Abshim Gamliel, he was leader of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin had 71 people, and the greatest of them becomes the head, and he's called the Rosh Yeshiva. He's called the Nasi. That's what's called the Nasi. The Nasi means the head of the Sanhedrin. So from this we understand that the Rambam, uh, for we, we understand that Sanhedrin rejoiced in the Simchas Be'i Sheva. Why? Because of Shimon Gamliel, he was the Nasi of Sanhedrin, the leader of Sanhedrin. So the Rambam says the Sanhedrin also rejoiced. We see this from Shimon Gamliel. Then the, the Gemara also brings, they said about Hillel Hazok and Hillel the Elder, when he used to rejoice in the Simchas Be'i Sheva. So one second, Hillel Hazok, since the Gemara calls him here Hillel Hazok, doesn't always call him Hillel Hazok the Elder. So we understand that the the, the Amar is trying to point out that his specialty here, and why we're highlighting him about his participation, Simchas Be'i Sheva, is because he was a Zokin, he was an elder. So that's why the Rambam says, also the Skenim, we see that they rejoice in Simchas Be'i Sheva. You may ask, there's a very interesting Ha'ara, uh, Ha'ara, um, um, oh, this is now actually, the Rambam brings this a little bit earlier. Um, Sorry, one second, about Skenim. Oh, maybe it's a little bit later. Um, in other words, when we talk about Skenim and Chachamim, we know there's a concept of Zokin, Zeshekana Chachma. Zokin is somebody who has, um, who has Chachma. Uh, where? One second, one second. So, what it, why do you say Chachamim and Zakenim? If a Zokin, the word, actually, we, we flesh out the word, the Gemara says, of Zokin is Zeshekana Chachamim. This is somebody who has Chachma. So, it would seem the greatness of. The greatness of age is. The greatness of age is what is experience. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that I launched this thing. I don't see where's this Sa'ara. unless it's um, ah. This Sa'ara is Sa'ara 28. I'm sorry that I, I, I I'm putting ahead. What's the Rebbe points out? We talk about Zokin and Chochem. Gedolei Chachmi Yisrael, and there's a the great wise people. There's a difference between that and Zekenim. So then we could say that Zekenim, could we say that Zeshekana Chachma, an elder person, his Chachma comes as a result of many years. In other words, it's the quality of his Chachma comes because of a quantity of years which give him a lot of experiences. And there's uh, the wealth of, 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 of knowledge through experience is unbelievable. And then there's another thing, Chachma Yisrael, different than Zekenim. Chachma Yisrael has got to do with his qualities. Um, that he's a yonik, v'chocham is young but very smart. So they're two different uh, qualities. I guess the best thing is when you have both the qualities of of, 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 of being young and smart and then becoming old and having also the... Uh, anyway, sorry, I, I thought it was here that the Rebbe says. So then, the, then there's something else the Rebbe says. The Rishalmi, Tess. The Rishalmi brings... There's another guy. Uh, no, nothing, not another guy. Another Amaira, another Tana. His name was Ben Yehoit Tzadok, and he would, son of Yehoit Tzadok, and he would pride himself on his elaborate da- jumps, 
I guess he was able to jump beautifully. Body movements. So since this story is brought to learn from it, so for sure the Gemara doesn't want to just not tell us who he is, just some enigmatic figure that we never heard about. It must be that this is a God will be so, this is a great leader of Jews in the time of the Basin Mikdash. He must be mentioned elsewhere. So actually in the names of Tanoim, the names of Rabbis of the Mishnah, we do find a Rabbi Shimon ben Yehi Tzadok. But it doesn't say anything special about him. So we must say that his greatness was that he was a Rabbi. When the, 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 the definition of Rabbi, so the Tesefta says, Mi talmidim rabbi. Somebody who has students is called a Rabbi, a teacher. In other words, once we call him a Rabbi Shimon Yehi Tzadok, that means he's with Rosh Hashiv. In other words, he was a head of Yeshiv, he had students. So the Rambam brings from that also that Rashi Yeshivas rejoiced in Sukhas Bei Sheva because the Yerushalmi says, Shimon Ben Yehi Tzadok. Ah, you can ask, why doesn't the Yerushalmi call him Rabbi Shimon Ben Yehi Tzadok? Why does he call him Ben Yehi Tzadok? So the answer here is, listen to this. It says that Ben Yehi Tzadok, Sami Yehi Tzadok used to pride himself on his great dancing, his great jumping. He himself would pride himself. One second, when somebody's speaking about himself, you have to speak in a way that there shouldn't be a, a doubt by others or even by oneself, a feeling of arrogance, a feeling of gaiva. So that's why he called himself in a, in a, in a, uh, um, in a lower way. He called himself a Ben Yehid Sadak, just like Rabbi Yechman Zakai was speaking about himself. He said he called himself Ben Zakai. He didn't want to call himself with the title Rabbi Yechman Ben Zakai. Well, Ben Zakai, the son of Zakai. So this is a, a, a humbling way of being able to refer to himself. Um, ah, you could ask. Well, I'll add this at the end. It's not relevant to him, to the to the prim. Yud. The reason why the Rambam doesn't we said, why did the Rambam say Bali Tshuva? He made two into six. From Chassidim and Anshem he made that into six. He fleshed it out based, as we said, the Rebbe just explained to us, based on the description of, who, of, the, of, the, of the Gemaras, of who used to participate. The, the Rambam made from that, each one represented a certain sector. What about Bali Tshuva, which the Brai does bring? Why does the Rambam bring it? So the Rebbe says that the Rambam shita is that the Brai wasn't adding about the Mishnah. He was explaining in, Bryce explains the Mishnah, he was explaining what the Mishnah says, Hasidim, it includes two kinds of Hasidim, Hasidim who were always Hasidim, and Bali Tshuva, those who came back to being Hasidim. And he goes according to his opinion, because there's a Machlekes here. Rashi says that Kol Hasid, to somebody to be a Hasid, he has to be Hasid Meikar, he has to have been a Hasid in his, from beginning to end. According to this, that doesn't include Bali Tshuva, because Bali Tshuva were for a period out. The Rambam, however, in Hilchas Deya says, somebody who's careful and cautious with himself, and he moves away from the middle path to the path of extra scrupulousness, extra piety, he's called a chassid. Well, this could be somebody who's a chassid from beginning to end, or somebody who, like Hatchila, wasn't like that. It was a Baal Tshuva. That's why the Rambam doesn't have a criteria that a chassid has to be all the way through chassid. It could be that now he's brought himself to a higher level, and now he's a chassid, and that's still called chassid. So according to the Rambam, the Mishnah that says Hasidim, it includes also Bali Tshuva. You don't have to say it as a separate, a separate kind. That's, that's what's meant by Hasidim. It means those that were always Hasidim, they were Hasidim from the begin, from, the, from, from, from beginning. And those that are were not for a while Hasidim and they, and they became Hasidim. That's all included in Hasidim. So now we'll also understand, Yudalov says the Rebbe, we'll understand why in, in connection, in continuation with talking about Simcha's Beis Sheva, the Rambam brings about the greatness of having Simcha in mitzvahs in general. Since, as we explain, the mitzvah of Sinchas Beis is not a, a new mitzvah. It's an addition in the mitzvah of Yom Tev. It's an endearment, a chavibus a mitzvah, an endearment, a belovedness of the mitzvah of Simchas Yom Tev that brings it out to be celebrated in an extraordinary way. So that comes out, that's the same content, that's the same agenda of every Simchas Shal Mitzvah. What is a Simchas Shal Mitzvah? Rejoicing with the mitzvah. It's an addition in addition to actually doing the mitzvah, it's not a new mitzvah to have joy when you do a mitzvah. It's embellishing the mitzvah to do it in a joyous way. right? Because of the love of Hashem who commanded you to do the mitzvah. However, and even more, in Simcha of Mitzvah, it's a greater achievement than Simcha's Beis Sheva. Why? Because Simcha's Beis Sheva, it's a time, it's in Yom Tov. Anyway, you're in a time of joy. Of course, you can't be, uh, of course, a person can't be sad. 
So it's not difficult to create an additional joy. Once you're already based in, in a non-sad mode, you're already in a joyous mode of Yom Tov, so now we push it higher. But Simcha, when doing a mitzvah in general, which is required by every mitzvah and every day, we all know, not every day is everybody in a state of joy. In whatever state of emotion he may be, that's an avoid of The Rambam says, this is a big service. This is a, this is a major undertaking. And that's why the, Reb, the, the Rambam brings a, a, a mushal. He brings an example from the uh, king, David HaMelech, who's mafaz as a machag of Hashem. He was dancing with abandon before Hashem to show how much the Simcha has to be with all mitzvahs, even if it's difficult to do. And that's why the Rambam, so it turns out the Rambam is going in a, in a way of from kal el from the lighter to the heavier. First he says, Simcha's Yom Tov, in general we have to have joy of Yom Tov. All the Yom Tov we have to have Simcha. Then he says the Simcha of Sukkot was an extraordinary of it, uh, Simcha. And it comes from the belovedness. And then, well, where does that come from? Because the Torah emphasized the sukkah, uh, simcha and sukkah. So that's why we do it in an extraordinary way. And then he says, well, and that's the way the attitude has to be with mitzvahs in general. But that's even more difficult to do. It's a higher level. It's a great aveda. It's a great undertaking. We need to have simcha for every mitzvah. Yud base. This is also a teaching for us to actualize. A yid can think, Mela, when we're t- if we're talking about all is well, when we're talking about the days of the days of our joy, sukkahs, that's when I can try and produce within myself, elicit and arouse within myself a joy. But how can a person make simcha by himself even without the special time of joy, the regular time? It says that Amam that the simcha of simchas beisheva, you know where it comes from. That, um, that no, it comes to Ramam and says that after you get to the great level of Simcha's Beisheva, the true expression of it is, the great undertaking is Simcha of Mitzvah in general. That even during the weekdays, mundane days, and in everything that a person does that's connected with Avedis Hashem, either literally doing a mitzvah or if it's a detail on a mitzvah because we say Kol all your deeds should be for the sake of heaven so for example when you work you're working in order to earn money to support your family which is a mitzvah in order to give tzedakah which is a mitzvah so there, there are parts of mitzvah and then there's something else and that's actually anything we do we're serving Hashem in the actual doing of it so therefore if you, if you get in that mindset doing a mitzvah, preparing for a mitzvah, or understanding everything you're doing is service of Hashem, you got to serve Hashem with joy. And it says, if do it, Hashem is Imcha, serve Hashem with joy, and we're always serving Hashem. So you always have to have a joy. It's a, very, it's a big undertaking, says the Ramam. Ah, we know that Chazal tells us that before Mashiach comes, also la'odam shimale ischeik pim be'el ma'zeh, oz yimale ischeik pinu, means then we will have our mouths full of joy. The Gemara deduces from that, we're not then when Mashiach comes, but now in this world before Mashiach, you're not allowed to have full on joy. So we understand that Simcha Shal Mitzvah is, is different. The Simcha connected with the Mitzvah is Adra, but it's, it's, an, it's an imperative. And that's what's going to bring the full on joy that we have, that Hashem has. It says, Yeshiv Hashemayim Yishak, uh, because that Pasuk is just when the one sitting in heaven will be joyous. Um, when he takes away all those that try and force, try and put pressure on the Eden to not do what they're supposed to do. And then that will lead to the fulfillment of the promise. Then taka, our mouths will be full of joy with the coming of Mashiach. So for Avedis Hashem, we have to have joy even now. We understand that the true joy will be when Mashiach comes. The Rebbe said, um, uh, the Rebbe quotes here in the Hara 79, the Zoyar that the Rebbe famously quotes, when we have joy down below, we create joy up above. I think what we put on our face here, so to speak, is on the other million, is on the face of Hashem, so to speak. It's the best way to change your reality, the way that Tzamech Tzedek taught in the Igris, and it is to be joyous. So, I just wanted to, to, to come back to, um, to something. I said the Ben Yehid Sadak talked about himself, he talked about himself demeaningly, but on the other hand, Mishtabech Bikvit he said he would pride himself on his, on his jumping. So if we're talking about speaking uh, on of, so, I heard a sikha the Rebbe in 50 years ago, 1972, on the first day of Rish Chedesh the Rebbe said a sikha. One of the things he was talking about was a, um, a certain rabbi was talking about fighting the, the, the terrible decree of Mir Yehudi, um, the definition of a Jew that has to be only according to halacha. 
you know, it's Israel. And he was, never wanted a certain rabbi in Brooklyn, apparently, to involve himself. And he said, no, I'm not such a big guy. My opinion is not so important. Uh, like, um, humble, the Rebbe said that, uh, he quoted the Gemara. The Gemara speaks about Chilul Hashem. What is Chilul Chil Hashem? is one of the worst sins. In the laws of, of how you do Teshuvah, Chilul Hashem is something that is the most difficult thing. Desecration of Hashem's name, most difficult things to do Teshuvah for. So the Gemara says that, what is Michil Hashem? And one of the Amayiroim says, one of the rabbis in the Gemara says, for me, for example, is if I take meat and I don't pay right away. Even though there's no obligation to pay right away. If you're going to pay later, you take it on credit and you pay. No. But because I'm such a great person, people may think that I took it and I, I didn't pay right away. There's some, it's not representing Hashem properly. So the Rebbe says, Mepharshim asks, isn't he honor? Isn't he humble? Why is he saying, I'm such a great guy that we don't, I, when I don't pay right away, it creates a desecration of God's name. But the answer is that it's very simple. It doesn't matter how he feels about himself, but he's realistic and honest. He knows how he's viewed by others. And if he's viewed by others as being somebody who needs to pay before he takes it and not take it and then pay later, then it's making a chil Hashem. So it doesn't matter who he is really, how he feels about himself. He has to be honest and know how people are looking at him. So I was thinking of that here. Ben Yehid Sadak, on the one hand, he, he talked about himself demeaningly. On the other hand, he was, I guess, trying to influence uh, others. He, he knew that others saw him, that he praised him for his, for his jumping. So he knew that you know, there's something special to that. So he spoke about that because that's the reality. You don't, you don't, you're not an on of when you can, when, when other people are seeing it. Interesting, in Hara 62, the Rebbe brings the Pnei Moshe says, Mishtabach Be'eni Harem. Those that saw him spoke about his Great, uh, uh, great jumping, or Mishapchin Oisay, the carbon Ada, one of the other Mepharshim Mishapchin says, they would praise him. Anyway, that says maybe there was a different. Akopanim, uh, I just wanted to. I heard that sicha, I wanted to just share that. All the best. Simcha.